Well, uh, this is the uh, vlog for July 8th, 2018, and I am not a crook. Uh, sorry. So, uh, we had a rather spirited discussion at dinner over, uh, not necessarily Nixon, but Spira Agnew. What a piece of work that guy was. Um, the gentleman who was the vice president of Richard Nixon and was all but proven to have taken money as part of a corruption scandal while he was governor in Maryland. Um, denied it vehemently the whole time and yet still resigned amid uh, Nixon's own investigation stemming from the Watergate scandal. You know, watching, reading this article about how this guy, you know, was so vehement in his uh, supposed innocence and going out and public speaking, attacking his opposite political party, it all sounds very familiar. Um, but I don't think that we in current times are nearly as bad a place as this country was during Nixon's um, <clears throat> tenure. We don't have anything like the Vietnam War. We have a lot of little problems and no terrible tragedy. Well, we have our fair share of tragedies, but we didn't have things like Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. being assassinated in the same year while this, while the entire Vietnam War was happening in the background, very much the foreground for some people, especially those who participated in it. I just am very glad that the world we live in, though it seems like it's coming apart at the seams, is actually relatively stable. Uh, but that's enough enough pol politic nonsense. Um, right before I finished up last night, I was talking about the Warframe Railjack system that's going to be added to Warframe in the future. <laughs> I'm going to be straight honest. I don't expect to see that system added to the game until 2019. They assure us that the Fortuna expansion is coming in 2018. I'm guessing very late in 2018, uh, possibly around the holiday season. Um, cause that looks like it's a lot of work. Uh, but railjacking looks like it's probably a lot of work as well. So uh, railjack is, let's step back for a second. Warframe is a game where you take your robot space ninja on missions and you cut apart bad guys, you blow them up with guns, you, you use magical void powers to do all sorts of things. That's the game. Late last year, I found out today that Planes of Eidolon aren't even a year old, they added their first open world zone, which I talked about yesterday. It was persistent. It was not the same formula as the rest of the game. And it's been a remarkable success. Uh, it's actually accessible to newer players, such as myself, who haven't reached max level yet, which is always nice um, to give us a different avenue for uh, growth um, in case we get tired of doing space missions over and over again. Although the Plains of Eidolon are quite tough, and it does help to have a suitably strong Warframe going out there doing missions, which is easier to get doing the classic sort of space missions uh, that have been available for a long time. That's not what Railjack is, though. Railjack is something completely different, and that's why it's so revolutionary and why it caught all of us off guard when it was revealed during the Tenor Live presentation. Put simply, Railjack is a game mode where you and another group of Tenno take control of a medium-sized spaceship and go fight other spaceships. This is not a one-man fighter because that's basically the same experience that you get from an Archwing, which has already been a system in the game for a couple of years now. Although you can totally launch in your Archwing from these ships in the Railjack game mode. Or you can stay on the ship and man two different turrets 
you can pilot the ship and man the forward-facing weapons, or if you're like me and you're not sure you're up to snuff on any of the, those things, you can uh, take control of the command console, which does things like uh, redistribute weapon, shield, and energy, uh, put out fires <laughs> as they break out, um, repel borders, uh, because that's something that can happen. Enemies can launch drones that smash into your ship. Suddenly they're on board and you have to fight them off. But that pales in comparison to the centerpiece. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it because it's something to watch. But if you just want a brief takeaway, I can give that to you right now. After blowing up a bunch of incoming fighters and drones with the turrets... The pilot of the ship brings this whole thing. It doesn't move very quickly. It moves remarkably slow in comparison with Archwings, probably so that it doesn't accidentally leave Archwings behind. The pilot brought the ship in slowly into a sort of broadside alongside another ship, at which point one of the people manning the guns got out of the gunnery station went to a port on the side of the ship and launched in their archwing, flew over to the enemy ship in their own boarding maneuver, got inside, and started blowing dudes away. I think that was um, D.E. Megan that was uh, performing the boarding maneuver in the presentation. Um, but she didn't get very far. Uh, she got a couple rooms in, and then an energy field just stopped her. She bumped and fell on her butt. And had to wait because one of the people on the ship then had to go and hack the shields and a number of other systems on the enemy ship to allow Megan to progress. So Megan keeps getting inside and the people back on her ship keep, you know, turning on and off systems as necessary so that she can get into the core. Now, she is just one Warframe and she doesn't have the power to destroy the ship from the inside, but she can disable the shielding around the core, scan the core which then makes it visible back to the person on the other ship who can get into a special gunnery station for the main guns. She put all energy into weaponry, went down into this sort of bombardier station, uh, locked on to the glowing dot within the uh, this enemy ship and fired all weaponry. And it was this huge blast of multiple lasers all zoomed in on one location which started a train reaction or excuse me a chain reaction uh megan who is still inside the ship after the strike happens is now running for her life to get back to the area where her archwing was while the ship is exploding around her <laughs> while all this is happening uh the ship's computer is informing you that there are reinforcements that are going to tear you apart and they're going to arrive in three minutes and then two minutes and then one minute and then when all's said and done, everybody's back on this massive new ship under player control, the whole thing f folds and unfolds, revealing its main drive, uh, Turn makes a turnabout, and then psh, it's gone. And the crowd went nuts. All my friends who were watching this also all went nuts. It is... A, <laughs> It's, I, I swear, I, I feel like Digital Extremes is going, we know that you like, uh, we know that you like space ninjas, but have you considered space piracy? Because it really does feel like something you'd see in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, or, uh, Sea of Thieves, maybe. Although I, I, ha I have a hard time believing that Sea of Thieves is going to be anywhere near as fun as what I saw in that presentation. And this was all on the heels of the Fortuna presentation. Everybody sort of expected Fortuna to get a lot more screen time, as it were, show off some of the new systems. That's what everybody that came to TennoCon really thought that they were going to see, and maybe a teaser for a continuation of the quest following the sacrifice. That's basically what we all signed up for. That's what we expected. And we got to see Fortuna, and we were waiting for the reveal of the, of the teaser. And then they show all this stuff off, and I just, I would never have expected it possible. But I've also seen, not personally, but sort of playing through Warframe, I've seen its evolution. I've, I remember playing the very earliest versions where it was always a Grenier ship that just had random 
layouts, but always the same tiles. And I put that game away for about five years and came back to it this year. And immediately, I uh, start off on this lush green earth planet. Um, I work my way into a lot of different tile sets with a lot of different sort of locations. I see a whole range of enemies that require different tactics. And of course, there's tons of different Warframes that all play differently. But then I keep getting more, you know, I get the Archwing content, which allows me to flow, fly open roam space. And it's very tough. Uh, and you have to spend a lot of time sort of upgrading those particular parts of the game which don't get upgrades from the stuff that you're normally doing. So that's one of the reasons I've spent so little time working on it. But, um, and then Planes of Eidolon come along. Uh, Planes of Eidolon has some huge bosses uh, that require their own set of tactics and are unlike anything else in the game. Um, the bounty missions flow very differently uh, than regular missions. They really are much more freeform. And now we're going to have Fortuna for even more stuff. And now we're going to have the Railjack game. It, and, I, and I say game, I should say mode, but it, it really feels like just another game. I mean, it, it's, it's still using that core run around into space ninja gameplay, but it's interspersed with all these other systems that all work together in tandem. And it really is just phenomenal. And I have to give applause to Digital Extremes. They did a fantastic job. The presentation was very solid. Steve was like, no crash, no crash, no crash. Big money, no Emmys. So, good on them. Anyway, I've gone over 10 minutes again. And I didn't even talk about the other thing that I did today, which was work on a website. I'm not ready to show that off yet. So, I'm just going to stop now and say, I'm Eric Spornitz, and tomorrow will be better.